Yeah, it went. All right, cool. All right. Hey, what's up, everybody? You are listening to another episode of Net Chicks. I am Mal here with Liv, and we are coming out to you with another brand new Riverdale rundown. We yes. just finished watching this week's episode. It is literally 9.04. We are ready to discuss Liv. Let's go. What do you want to talk about first? Um, well, I'm going to talk about, like, overall the episode. I really liked this episode. Compared to last week, this was yeah. phenomenal. I just think this episode was tailor-made for the two of us because yes. we love our secondary characters. We so love our secondary characters. Well, I did not even miss Bughead, which is crazy no. because I always say that I like them so much better than Jughead and, not Jughead, um, Archie and Veronica. Until they showed up in the middle of boning, yeah. I was, like, not even cognizant of the fact that they weren't in this episode yeah. at all. They were only in, like, the first second when they were passing in uh, Pops. That was yeah. it. Yeah. And I was fine with that. Like, Jughead honestly, was in a total of three scenes. Betty was in two. Yeah. Exactly. This, I honestly, like, I feel like the writers out there are, like, listening to this podcast and being like, Maybe maybe we should do something. That's how I feel because Honestly. this was this was a this was an episode for us. Specifically. This was a Netflix episode yes. for sure. For sure. I immediately watching the previously on. I was like, this is gonna be good. Exactly. I knew it. I it, knew it. It was so perfect. And I was like, kind of tipped. Off. I didn't know it was gonna go this direction, but I was kind of tipped off because um, I was on like my explore page on Instagram and the writer of Riverdale. He, like, posted a screen cap of Tom and Sierra in bed. And they're like, oh, like, wedding bells are ringing. And I'm like, oh, I was like, are they getting married this episode? Because uh, I like them. I, I express I this. I express as soon this as the they, episode. yeah, as soon as they said they were leaving their other people, I was all in. Yeah, to me, me it was tough when Tom Keller was cheating on his military wife yeah. with Sierra, but once they said they were going to leave their significant others for each other, I was fine. Just yeah, maybe and... don't cheat on someone in active duty. But oh, yeah, that was all. True. Like, you got to support your troops. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but I mean... the marriage and the troops. That's yeah. what we care about. I mean, but in all honesty, like, you find out the backstory of their whole entire relationship and how they were in high school and they couldn't be together. Like, that's yeah. so upsetting. Okay. So, like, you want them together. But So, their kids were pretty much the main storyline. So, let's dive right yeah. in with Josie. Exactly. Um, um, she didn't get her... She went in for this Juilliard audition, but beforehand, she kind of has some not so much closure with Sweet Pea because I completely forgot that they hooked up. I can't. Because that scene is burned into my brain of them at Cheryl's pool party because of those terrible extras in the background. I can yeah, never exactly. forget that never scene. If anyone perfect. doesn't know what we're talking about, go on our Instagram. There is a video from like months ago I posted no, of from just the first episode. Terrible extras in the Sweet Pea Josie scene. And I couldn't take my eyes off them the entire time. And I will never for- I could see them on the street and I would know them. I'd be like, oh my god, you're the extras from that pool party scene in Riverdale. I would know them instantaneously. I I wake up in a cold sweat at night because of these extras. They are burnt into my brain. So I can never forget that Sweet Pea and Josie had a summer fling. But I'm very happy that she has moved in the direction of Archie because I have wanted this for a total of seven days. I've really cared about this ship. So let's go. No, but yeah, no, I'm like very happy that they got together. Uh, (laughs) And I'm excited that it's going to, you know, move on to the next episode. We saw that promo. I'm all in on this relationship. I, I don't think I've ever been so, so all in. And Archie so in. was good this episode. Like, he wasn't bad at all this episode. It's just probably because uh, the storyline no. wasn't on him. Well, so here's the thing. I think Josie and Veronica are very similar, but they're different yeah. in the ways that count. Mm-hmm. Okay. But I think sometimes Veronica, like Cheryl, which we will talk about later, needs to figure out how to check her privilege at the door kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. Um, Josie is not really in that situation. I think Veronica forgets sometimes that she comes from a very affluent family. And also everyone is scared shitless of her dad. 
and there are certain privileges that come with that. Um, so a lot of times she just, her badassery comes off as entitled. That doesn't happen with Josie. You can tell that she's fighting for everything and yeah. she actually earns everything. Um, so I, I don't know. I think with Archie and Veronica, sometimes him just being a supportive boyfriend almost seems like clingy and whiny. I don't think it feels that way. I think it yes. really does feel like he's building Josie up. Yes, I, I couldn't agree with you more with this whole thing. Thanks. I, I actually, <laughs> that's that's perfect way to describe the whole Josie and Veronica similarities and stuff like that because Veronica is entitled and she does forget that when yeah. she like tries to be All like this person. Time. And which is can, why I think it works with Reggie because he does not check his personality for Veronica's. Yeah, exactly. I like and these relationships a lot better than I liked the previous one. Yes, we are. This is smooth sailing. We love this. This is exactly the direction that Riverdale smooth should be sailing. going. If um, Josie if doesn't stays. leave Riverdale. <laughs> yes, exactly. That whole thing. If you guys didn't watch our full watch, oh, listen to our full length episode. I, mean, I uh, guarantee most people didn't. I feel like we have two separate audiences. Yes, me too. So uh, just yes, recap 100. real quick. So. The, this news came out that a few weeks ago that Katie Keene, which is a character in the Archie comics, is going to have her own spinoff. It's going to be like Sabrina, but I think it's going to be on CW, and it's going to have characters that we know from uh, Archie comics. Uh, Josie will be in it. Ashley Murray has been signed on. She's going to be one of the four major characters, and... Katie Keene is like this fashion designer like type of character. If you think of Katy Perry teenage dream era, that's exactly what she looks like. Katy Perry basically like literally influenced everything from that whole era is about Katie Keene. Like right. every, it's like they someone did like a comparison. It's basically exactly the same thing. But so the show is supposed to take place in the future, right? Yes, it's supposed to take okay. place when they're like in their 20s in New York City. And they're supposed to be four struggling artists. Okay. So I don't know who the other two people are, like whatever characters those are. But uh, Josie is signed on, which if reading from the plot, like that's perfect. But yeah, so Ashley Murray signed on and she can't physically do Riverdale and this show at the same time because it's two different timelines. See, and it's probably going to overlap like scheduling wise. So that's I probably just- why? don't understand now that Ciara and Tom are married how they would write Josie off of Riverdale I like you can't say Josie and Ciara are moving that's not an option what I think they're gonna do is she's gonna probably if it gets picked up right if they finally pick up the pilot it's gonna be on CW next season she's gonna get something about Juilliard and they're gonna have her go a year early into Juilliard and she's gonna move to New York City so the one thing I will say mm-hmm. about this is the fact that Tom and Sierra are married now does give me some kind of reassurance because even if they go with that, Josie will have to come back at some yes. point. Like, and- I think probably once a season, she'll have a cameo, you know? You can't just, I don't know, you have a brother now who's a main, not a main, but like an upper secondary character. Yeah. I think well, she will... No, exactly. But even to write her off, she still has connections to the town, provided nothing drastic happens. So I do think it would be seamless for her to just kind of come in and out if they write something out like her going to Juilliard early or something like that. Yes. And I think it's also like the same situation with like schooled. Like they can't have Lainey do both. Yeah, exactly. But But – they say Barry is going to be in this season of school. Do you know? It, yeah, that yeah. kind of stuff. As but, much as they say there's not going to be crossover, there's going to be crossover. Yeah, there's going to be crossover. And now that I think about it, completely with the, the whole schedule thing, I know they filmed Sabrina right after uh, they finished Riverdale because it's the same crew and it's the same writers. Okay. So that comes to think of it. She probably could still do both. If you think about it, because the writers yeah. are doing both and everyone in the the crew is doing both. So who knows? Um, right. But it said that she wasn't going to do it. But that makes me upset because that means even if it 
doesn't get picked up, they're still in the mindset that it is going to get picked up and they're still going to do this pilot. So probably by the end of the season, I don't think Archie and Josie are going to stay together. Right. No, I don't think so either. So, yeah. So Um, we got to ride this high as long as we can. As long as possible. Yes. On another note. Yeah. While Josie and Archie were figuring it out, getting together. It was such a slow, like, nice burn. You know, it like was, that whole scene was perfect at the I end. I loved it. And I didn't love KJ Appa singing. I never do. Yes. But I never do, but he was, I feel like he was a lot better singing wise because he was harmonizing most of it. Yeah. So true. it really wasn't too bad. Oh, right. yeah. Continue. We have a lot bigger stuff to talk about. So mm-hmm. let's talk quick about Reggie and Veronica because I do think that that's the other like minor plot point. Oh, because minor, we've got yeah. two big ones to talk about. Exactly. So. Um, yeah, with the whole Reggie and Veronica have to pay their dues and they have to find money, which honestly, this put Veronica right in her place. I felt that she's like, yeah, I was like, you, you know, destroyed this. Now you gotta, you gotta go clean up your own mess. I don't so, know. I do think it's a little strange. Well, yeah, it's a little strange. Hey, but it, I might die if my daughter doesn't come up with this money. Oh yeah, it is. But I thought it was more of, like, now Veronica has to clean up her own mess instead of, like, having someone else do it. So I was like, okay. I guess I like that. But at the same time, you do have to remember that these are juniors in high school. Yeah, that's true. Like, our siblings are older. Could you imagine? (laughs) Mikey and Gracie. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. My sister can't even, I mean, no offense to Gracie. I know she's not listening, but I know some of her friends do. Yeah. So, you know, I think the world of my sister, but no offense to her. She can't even, like, watch an episode of Dance Moms on repeat without FaceTiming me sometimes. You know, like, she yeah. can't do anything half the time. She's yeah, they're very always competent, on- and I think the world yeah. of her, whatever. But Michael's very competent as well, but him with his phone and the whole thing, he can't even, like, drive to, exactly. like, my friend's house, That's what who he's saying. been to, like, so forever. You want- these juniors in high school to make sure that you and your husband are safe from the mob or whatever gang shit is going on. That's the craziest move of all time. These are 17 year olds. Granted, one of them owns a business. Yeah. But come on. Yeah, I agree. I, yeah. So they had, what they have to do? They had to basically steal money to pay their dues and it ends up working out, but they didn't get the mo- the money they needed. Reggie gets shot, but like grazed. They kind of like skipped over That's that. They crazy. were like, yeah, it's crazy. They I were think like, they just backed themselves into a corner. They kind of made the promo for this week, and we're like, "That's sick." And then they were like, "Oh shit, we have to keep that in the episode now." <laughs> yeah, basically. But plot twist: Gladys comes back. Yeah. Gladys Jones comes back because she's the one that they were gonna give the drugs to craziest plot twist crazy plot twist i and now you find out she's there for a bigger reason i thought what is that reason we really don't know no, it was kind of like a 180 because she was like very helpful last like last time we saw her she was like, but she was like on her own turf it was on her terms her and yeah. Doug had had kind of a confrontation they did um so i don't know Jo- so now Gladys said to Jellybean that Jellybean was FP's weakness. This show writes itself because something is going to happen. Jellybean, of course, is going to change tides to be a morally good person. But she's going to feel conflicted because she's in cahoots with her mom, blah, 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 yeah, blah, blah, blah. Has been with her mom for like. Clearly Gladys is not going to have the same weakness for Jughead as FP has for Jellybean. But- oh, yeah. I think it's worth noting that whenever I am on the record, whenever the confrontation happens and someone says something about FP having a weakness for Jellybean, I can, it's writing itself in my head right now. He's going to whip around and say, yeah, but I got two kids and I have a weakness for both of them because Gladys is going to put Jughead at risk. A hundred percent. That is going to happen. And FP is not going to stand for that shit. Oh yeah. Especially after last week. When his entire reasoning for trying to kill Hiram was to get revenge on something that Hiram did to Jughead like a season and a half earlier. A thousand, a thousand percent. This entire storyline has nothing to do with anything except to prove 
or reaffirm FP's dedication to Jughead. Yeah, and I agree with that. Like, I think the whole, like, JB, like, oh, you have it in your pocket? Like, yeah, he, she is going to put Jughead yes, at risk. Jughead. Yeah. Yeah, and he's going to be like, that's my guy. That's my son. I like, I will go the... to ends of earth for him. No, I totally agree. I think yeah. this is going to be, like, the opposite of the whole Fred Hiram Archie situation last yeah. year. I think it's going to be... It's going to seem like FP is also putting Jughead at risk for Jellybean, but that's not going to be the case in the long yeah. run. Exactly. And hopefully Jellybean and Jughead have a good relationship in the long run because I think they for as much as estranged siblings can have a good relationship I think they do they both yeah. know that it's not their choice that they're separated that's their yeah. parents moving so I guess we'll see what happens yeah we'll see I'm what happens excited, though. I've been waiting for Jellybean to get on the show for so long same and yeah. also I'm excited for like the conflict that she's going to give to Riverdale 100% uh, I'm cause... excited to see her interact with Betty yeah. I'm excited to possibly see her interact with Tony and Veronica. Yeah. Because we don't really have a feel for what kind of person she is. So we kind of do need to get a feel for her personality before we can see yeah. how she's going to interact with these other characters and which other female characters are going to be a big yeah. influence on her. Because we really don't have any characters her age. Yeah. And you know what I was just thinking that just popped in my head? You just said something about Tony and her interaction with her. What if she like kind of like tries to infiltrate herself into the pretty poisons mm -hmm. that's a possibility yeah there's so much that they could do with jughead i'm really excited for the potential exactly the pretty and he poisons. wasn't even that much of the he wasn't even that much of the, the episode which was fine like he was in three I, scenes yeah like, exactly I was, a legitimate three scenes he was yeah. in it was crazy it's um, probably in his contract <laughs> he had to be in this episode oh probably, yeah like uh all right. Him and Lily Reinhardt had a nice break this week. <laughs> yeah, it was a good break. I And this is like one of the better episodes, yeah. I would say, of the season. For Matt's sure. got to hurt the ego a little bit, though. Yeah, I mean, one of the best episodes this season was the flashback episode. And it wasn't even their characters. They just had to play people. It, though, so it yeah, was, it was different. Um, yeah. yeah, that's true. Speaking of the pretty poisons, though. Tony and Cheryl this episode. Now, yeah. a lot of Cheryl's storyline, aside from her college admissions thing, did depend on Kevin and Moose. Yes. Um, so, basically, Cheryl decides, which is so shitty on Cheryl's part. So, so shitty. She and, you know, Kevin have this heart-to-heart -heart about how Kevin, you know... Wants Moose to come out, but like you know, he can't really do it on his own terms, which is understandable. Like you can't just tell someone to come out to their dad. But they have been in a relationship since the summer, and a lot of people do know that Moose is dating Kevin. It's not really that much of a secret. Yeah. Besides, like the R R O T C. But so it's Cheryl it is as much as it's fair to say you can't really force someone to come out to exactly. their dad. You also can't expect Kevin to just be waiting around. Like Kevin's yes. out. You see this on TV and movies all the time. I've never, like, known anyone who's been in this kind of relationship yeah. where they feel like they're forced back in the closet. But I'm sure it happens in real life also because it wouldn't be in pop culture as much as it is if it didn't have yeah. some basis in reality. But you yeah. see it all the time, all these out characters saying that they feel like they're being forced back in the closet because their partner isn't out. And that's yeah. obviously have, – that has to be difficult, so. Yeah, it is difficult, so. Well, it's I mean, I wouldn't story know, line. but it seems yeah. difficult. I was like, oh, it, it is difficult, as if I know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, no clue. But, but like, I, have, I literally have no <laughs> basis. I was like, yeah, it's difficult, like, as if I've never <laughs> gone through this. As I've always gone through this. I'm not. I'm. Yeah. yeah. So, moving on, though. <laughs> moving on with the situation. But, like, I understand. <laughs> yeah, no, I, had, I was, like, saying it. Like, I know You're everything. Like, yeah, it definitely is tough. All right, Liv. <laughs> I mean, yeah. So Move I have, along. <laughs> But anyways, yeah, I it must be difficult though because considering the fact that yeah you're right it it's get brought up in a lot of pop culture and everything, and it, it does suck in on Moose's end because starting okay literally starting from the beginning of the episode when that whole interaction with Sierra and Tom talking to Moose's dad about them getting married, and once Sierra goes oh he was jealous of me I was like no 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 this has to do with yeah. Um, a thousand I, percent. That was I the knew it was like, oh, this time. Yeah, but I did not expect 
him to be gay. So, no, I did. So, here's the thing. I forgot about the fact that Tom, in the flashback episode, Tom and Sierra had a thing. I forgot all about that. Oh, I didn't. Because that's my, that's my, that's my shit. Because it's, it's so quick. It's so yeah. quick. He just runs in and kisses her and then leaves. But. That scene, yeah. Just kind of reading that scene, because I forgot about that relationship, I was like, oh, shit. Like, they definitely, something happened in high school. I thought they were more um, in a relationship, not so much that Tom was just kissed and then like, yo, what's up? That's not really my thing. Oh, you thought it was, okay. I thought they were, yeah, I thought that they had a thing, which, you know what? Happens. People explore whatever do yeah. your thing but i was i was kind of like is tom gay like <laughs> i <laughs> did have a moment <laughs> obviously that wasn't ex- exactly how that went down but this episode the second the second that moose said i came out to my dad he was quiet and fine later like it all ended up okay i was like you're wrong I looked at my clock and I was like, yeah. there is not a shot in I, hell. Exactly. There is not a single shot. Oh, it's yeah. okay. I knew that the dad was going to be ha- behind it. I didn't know it was going to be like the Gargle King style. I thought when he walked down to the bunker uh, and he like was setting up with the candles, I thought like Kevin was going to turn around and he was going to have a black eye. Like I thought that was going to be it. Like I thought he was going to be like, right. that's exactly what I thought. Like then I, I got paranoid happen. about Moose, which yeah, was unfounded. But when they were talking, I was like, oh, shit. They're about to fucking pumble, Kevin. Yeah. I thought Moose was going to end up being in on something at one point because I was like, oh, my God. I was just getting so, so paranoid. Same. I was, like, getting, like, I was shaking. My favorite part is when Cheryl goes up to Moose and apologizes. And he's like, oh, yeah, I'm going to the bunker. She goes, you better get new sheets. Yeah. When he said to Cheryl, that was when I knew that Moose wasn't in on something. Because my thing is, why would he talk to Cheryl about it if he was Mm -hmm. in on it? Yeah, but it's good that that whole scene happened because obviously when that whole thing with the parents happened and they're all like, oh, this is a setup to get to our kids. And then my pulse was a racing during that scene. I'm confused because didn't they get the letter before Moose came out to his dad? Yeah, but I I think Moose's dad kind of knew. Yeah. You're right. Like, I, I really do because every time, just the way that scene went, and then there was something. Oh, Moose's dad walked in on them. Yeah, with the rest of the ROTC. And you're like, I told I, you they're being here. He totally like, knows. Bullshit. I yeah, was like, I knew he knew. Mind your damn business. That exactly. Shit. I know. But, I was like, who the fuck are yeah. you? Get out of here. Yeah. So I guess they did know. Um, yeah. But that. That whole scene when they were like, oh, like, we got to call our kids. I'm like, oh, my God. I knew it. I was like, they're going to go down the bunker. Something's going to happen to them in the bunker. Like, yeah. everyone was like, do you know where where he is? I'm like, oh. all right, Penelope, looking out. I know. <laughs> what the hell? Looking out. Because yeah. at that point, they're all in it together. Yeah. I know. It is kind of. The crazy thing about Penelope, I mean, the fact that Cheryl answered the phone was insane. Yeah. And I, saw a tweet, I retweeted it from our um, main account that was like the most unrealistic thing about the show is all these kids just answer their parents phone call fair but yeah. the fact that Cheryl especially answered she's yeah. like oh my god it's literally the crypt keeper what do you yeah. want mom if you hate your mom that much and you have the most fucked up mother daughter relationship of all time I mean and when I say that obviously if you're listening you probably watched this week's episode but she actively sought to keep her daughter from going to her dream college because of her sexuality. Yeah. That's the most fucked up thing of all time. Oh, it's fucked. Completely yeah. fucked. But, oh, I'll take the call. Don't worry. Yeah. I'm I mean, talking about Cheryl. I mean, when does her mother ever call her for, like, important yeah. situations? So I think that was probably, like, her, I was like, okay, this must be serious. But, my favorite thing is like, why are all these kids having sex? Like while they're answering, like why, why was this? This show was incredibly, incredibly sex positive and yeah. incredibly, incredibly unrealistic. Exactly. Like, if my parents called me, I'd just be 
like at that time, I'd be probably watching Netflix or Listen, probably. I was a little bit of a late bloomer, but so, I knew kids having yeah. sex in high school, whatever. These kids have so much more sex than anyone I've ever met exactly. in high school. So much, so much sex. Like even I like have met people who are, were early bloomers, to say yeah. the least. And I would like tell them, they're like, this is like such a, like even with Gossip Girl, all these like CW shows, like yeah, yeah. Uh, kids, yeah. kids don't know sex education as much as like as they get older, like especially with college, like this is like college stuff. That's why like I feel like I can relate. Let me tell to you this. something right now. These kids in high school are having more sex than people that I knew in college. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Every so, single day, it's a that's little a much. lot. That's a lot. Don't don't you have class? Yeah, class. <laughs> what are you doing? Jughead, you that. have a gang to run. Yeah, we gang. Okay. But I mean, he what, what was he doing this whole episode anyways? And the one scene that he's in. Got to give those bughead shippers, yeah. yeah, what they want. But um yeah, they are like having a lot of sex. They have a lot of sex that? on this show. To be they clear. Do. I think that's very clear. But to be clear, they have like a lot a lot of sex on this. But every like, teen show, they have a lot of sex yeah, on. But it's like so unrealistic sex. I've like talked about this like compared to like when I did my thing about sex education, like yeah. that was like real life issues with the relationship sex. This is just like thrown in for people to get hot and heavy, be like, "Oh, my ship." Like, "Okay." Yeah. That's really all it is. <laughs> just the fact that they all were in like a very serious situation. And all the teenagers are having sex and answering the phone. Except like, for the that... one couple that I wanted to be having sex. Yeah. Exactly. Stupid Josie and Archie <laughs> are just tuning guitars together, but okay. I mean, obviously they wouldn't be having sex that I know. Early. But, but you know, exactly yeah. you're right though. That's the couple like I want to go hard. That's hard. what I want to see. Exactly. That's the I want to see KG Apple with his shirt off. That's listen, interesting. I do. I like to see Bughead. I do, but we see them yeah. all the time. You. And I like. Let me let me just go on the record. I feel like we've kind of touched on pretty much all the major topics of the week. Um, but Reggie is quickly becoming my favorite character on oh. this show. Yeah. Just every line that he says is so funny. Yeah, he was like, "Now I can tell people like that I waiting. got shot." Yeah, <laughs> Veronica's like, "Actually, you can't." You like, can't. Fuck you, Veronica. Yeah, Verona, Veronica. <laughs> like, yeah. shut up. He just got shot. You can give him a little something. Wait till tomorrow to tell him that he can't tell anybody. Jesus yeah. Christ, Veronica. And also, and then, Reggie's so hot. Like, I can't. Like, he bro, was like really hot in this episode. Here's my only thing with this couple, and I, it sucks because they're also a real life couple. You know yeah. how a lot of times people say that it's tough when blondes date because they look like their brother and sister. They, yeah, they kind of look like their brother and sister. Except one's Asian and one's Brazilian. I know, but they like they just have similar generally features. the coloring. Yeah, they, they do look have like features. yeah. But I agree with that. Yeah, but. He's so hot. Like, just, he's also going to be in a new movie. I'm so excited with uh, Yara Shahidi. Very excited for that. I don't know. It's like Stars Line. I don't know. Some, I just saw the commercial, the trailer for it. And KJ Appa posted about it on his Instagram, like, yesterday. Uh, on the, his Insta story. But I'm excited. And he's been, I, I agree with you. Like, he's been really, like, yeah. started by one of my he favorites. He is. Even when they're waiting for what turns out to be Gladys, he's like, please be somebody chill. Please be somebody chill. I'm like, yeah. dude. I agree. <laughs> but yeah, I agree, too. Oh, wait, the yeah, sun he's, is just, also, he's very funny. It's called The Sun is Also a Star, and it comes out May 17th. Is and that a Shakespeare thing? No. It's like a book. Oh, that sounds like a Shakespeare kind of a quote you know it does sound sound like because you know yeah. him and his motifs with stars and hey Jenny Yachts if you're listening hit us up if this is <laughs> yeah. a Shakespeare quote Jenny Y just hit us up yeah um but <laughs> that no. was weird that I said Yachts that was bizarre but... <laughs> um yeah but yeah he's definitely becoming one of my favorite characters for sure like in this series and also I'm like in love with Casey Cott now I don't know why like Kevin you is think? one of my yeah, I like. I'm so in love. Like, I was like scrolling through his Instagram before, like during a commercial. I was like, wow, like I am in love. How old is he? He's like 26. That's not bad. Oh, he's not single. This is his brother. He's older. I yeah, think. Yeah, he's, he's got to be like in his 30s. Then yeah, I know he's married. Early, 
Yeah, doesn't he have a kid? Or am I wrong? I gotta look it up. Nap on a cot. But yeah, I'm married to Megan Cot. Yeah. And (laughs) yeah. And my favorite thing is when you tweeted, Kevin's directing Heather's. He can't die. I was like, yeah, he can't die. That is my number one. That you know how I get with scary movies and stuff. Yeah. In all, any time that that kind of suspenseful situation happens, I just think about whether or not I know I'm supposed to see this character later. Yeah. And that's how I get through it. Yeah. Like any scary movie, I like run. If someone, if I think someone's about to die, I like run through the trailer in my head. And if they're in a scene in the trailer that I haven't seen yet, I'm like, we're good. And that's all I think about the whole time. Honestly, like when you said that, I was like, yeah, that's right. Like he can't die. Well, the whole scene, because you, I thought. Uh, before the commercial break, before when they got together, I was like, oh my god, they're really gonna, like, Boost is gonna die, like, something else is gonna happen, and I was, I'm just thinking, like, no, like, Kevin is signed on, like, he can't leave, he's, like, a very important character, I thought they were gonna kill Moose at one point, and yeah. then, then Kevin well, was like, shit no, about Moose, though, I have to be honest, yeah, but I'm so mad that they get together, like, finally, like, they're free, like, they're both out, like, this whole situation, they don't have to sneak around, and they send him to Greendale, yeah, but you know what? You know who lives in Greendale? Rena. Our <laughs> favorite teenage witch. Yeah, I know. So. Who okay. knows? <laughs> yeah, because every, they can't. The thing is, though. You know who has a gay cousin in Greendale? That's right. Our favorite teenage witch. <laughs> yeah, because the other guy's a nut job, I guess. I forgot what happened. Um, I, we'll have I don't to even catch know. up. You'll we'll have to catch up. Yeah, we have to do a recap. But. The thing is about Riverdale is that they get our hopes up now because they used to just send people to Greendale all the time, but they can't do that anymore because now yeah. they have a show based in Greendale. Greendale. We're like, oh my god, are they going to be on the Chilling Adventures of Sabrina? Like, who knows? Are they going to be involved in future lawsuits involving satanic cults? We don't yeah, know. We Maybe. Don't know. But if we don't see Moose on Greendale, I'll be very upset because of the fact they can't just keep shipping people off there and yeah, not do, do anything. Like they yeah. they gotta actually show them, and it's it's not hard for them, yeah. But it, it, it's, I'm just saying, like, ugh. Yeah. yeah. So, um, what else did we talk about? Like, we really like went through. We didn't really talk about Cheryl and Tony as much, but they're they just got into a really big fight. Did they? Yeah. I got into a 45 second fight. Yeah. Tony was 100 percent right. I was like, Cheryl, you're oh. my girl, but what the fuck? Exactly. And when she it outed, ends up, was, and she's like, what? the blind item shut the fuck up cheryl you basically said like you gave his characteristics yeah you're like <laughs> you gave his whole name that rhymes with goose is gay like <laughs> shut up yeah um but it comes out to the pretty poisons which we talked about before cheryl was trying to make it up for tony basically the rest of the episode and i'm very excited for a girl gang to go yeah. against the serpents yeah. like, well i think we'll learn more as much as cheryl Carol and Tony were big parts of this episode. They really didn't contribute that much to the overall plot, I felt like. Yes, exactly. So let's wrap up here. No Riverdale next week, meaning no Riverdale rundown next week. We're pissed. So pissed. But it happens. They just and spring this is like, us every now and then. Because this was such, like, this is such a good episode. You're like, yes. Yeah. Like, let's go. This is how I felt after, you know, the flashback episode that I was so excited for. But this was a good episode. Yeah. I have to so, keep it on that. Let's wrap it up here. If you love, love, love our Instagram videos and you want to see us a little more in action than just listening to us, you can head over to our brand new YouTube channel. Yes. It's just called Net Chicks, right, Liv? Yes. I don't just know. I, didn't Net it I post the whole unedited video because I'm terrible at editing videos. Yeah. Spoiler alert, I always am the one who edits video. Yes. I edit. <laughs> I edit the audio, just take everything, and then I post the whole video on there, which I'm ex- very excited about. So you get the whole unedited stuff, which there really isn't that much. But, you know, you get to see our beautiful faces yeah. and Plus, Molly give me looks the whole episode. Yeah. <laughs> Spoiler but, alert, you'll learn that once an episode, I always just show Liv how far into the episode we are, because sometimes she goes on tangents that I cannot control. Yeah. Um... And exactly. also, my makeup looks so good today, so you probably should just, like, want to look at what my face looks like, whatever. <laughs> yeah. I mean, tell me it doesn't look amazing. Yeah, it does um, And then I have, you know, all of our Instagram, Twitter handles in the info on the YouTube video, so if you want to yeah. catch up anywhere else, you could always look at that. 
I also have the same info. I put the info of each episode. So mm-hmm. this is going to be up at the same time the pop, uh, you'll be hearing this. Yeah. So very excited for that. New ways to engage with us. Yeah. Um, And tell your friends. Yeah, tell your friends always. Yes. Be like, yo, here are these girls. Talk about Riverdale. Like, I totally agree with them. You should definitely listen. Ride on the school bus, the train, <laughs> go to class. Come on. Yeah. You could just listen do your to us. thing. Come on. Yeah. Come on. And if anyone actually does watch the video, I do feel like I should give a disclaimer as to why I've just been drinking this green beverage the whole episode. All right. So, um, just quick story. A- on Christmas, me and my cousins iced my uncle all day, but we had to make sure he knew what icing was. So on Thanksgiving, which we had at my house, we decided to ice my one cousin. Um, so we had a six pack of like generally ices. It was the weirdest experience ever of like mix matching flavors at the store. I'll tell mm. that story a different day if we have time one time because it is very biz- bizarre. But now since Thanksgiving, I just have all these like ices, Smirnoff ices <laughs> sitting in my fridge. That I bought. Like, I paid for them. Yeah. So, so you might as well drink them. Instead of going out and buying more alcoholic apple juice, as I affectionately call my favorite Angry Orchards. Yes. I was like, I may as well. Lot. I hope I you do. notice. And you always take it out, like, twice. And I'm like, what the? Where is she getting this from? Yeah. I like, love those. It's, Plus, like, so out of shot work- when you grab it. Yes. Yeah, now that I'm a working girl, I need a little, I need a little cool down after work. <laughs> Gotta wind down a little bit, yeah. you know how you do. Um, yeah, but so I've just been making my way through these leftover smearing off ices, and you know, they're not as bad when you don't have to chug them, but yeah, they are. Yeah, so anyway, that's why it looks like I've been drinking literal poison <laughs> this entire episode. <laughs> I thought it was Angry Orchard, but then when you showed me a thing, I was like, oh, it's Smirnoff. It's, like, bright green. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, it's no, pretty. this pack had green apples and mangoes in them. It's a whole weird situation that there's, like, two flavors. I'll tell the story at a different time. Yeah. But, yeah, that's that's how the cookie crumbled. Liv, you want to take us off with your obnoxious sign-off? <laughs> All right, so thanks so much for listening. Bye. <laughs> I hate you. I know.